LeBron, over the last several years, uh, the names, it's been Jordan, and Kobe, Malone, and tonight Kareem. How does it hit you to sit atop that scoring map? Um, I don't think it has. I don't think it has hit me. Um, you know, I had a moment, you know, obviously when it happened and, and embracing that moment and seeing my family and my friends and, you know, you know people that's been, you know, around me since I started this journey, um, even before the NBA. So, you know, definitely had a moment right there, very emotional, just to, you know, knowing just, you know, me be from a, a kid from a small town in Ohio and, and uh, you know, um, you know, I had a moment there, but I don't think it's really hit me on what, what just transpired. Um, um, as much as I tried to live in the moment, it was kind of a blur. Um, you know, but you know, looking back there and seeing my seeing my guys back there and being you know out there on the floor with my kids and my wife, and my mom, you know, um, you know, and it's just a, it's, a, it's a it's a really cool feeling. LeBron, specifically, um, what was it like to share this moment with your sons? Um, Two basketball players, I talked to him at halftime, saw him obviously on the court in the locker room. What was it like for you to, to, to be their dad tonight? Um, you know, it ain't even about basketball with me when it comes to being a father. It's about setting, setting an example, being a role model every day. You know, um, you know it's a 24-hour, uh, seven-day, uh, a week thing, you know. And, uh, you know, basketball has uh, given me a lot. Um, has taken me all over the world, has inspired a lot of people. But, you know, for me, um, you know, being a father is something even, you know, way more uh, dynamic, way more driven um, than, than the game. So, you know, I try to set an example, you know, by how I treat their mother on a day-to-day -day basis, how I treat their grandmothers, you know, how I treat their little sister, um, you know, how I treat others uh, with kind and, and uh, with patience and things of that nature, and hopefully I can just, you know, instill life skills on them so when they walk out, you know, in the real world, you know, um, they'll be able to have themselves like, like men, uh, which they've been able to do thus far in their early stages of their life. So, um, you know, basketball is just extra credit. LeBron, there was a ton of anticipation leading into tonight, and we get late in the third quarter. You're shooting it well, 34 points already and it's the the moments upon us uh, you take us into it, it was one shot you made the one shot um to break the record uh, was that a spot you were looking for did, did, did the play unfold before your eyes what was the feeling no it wasn't i mean it's, uh, i just played the game as it's supposed to be played tonight as i've always done didn't press myself um didn't you know over exude too much energy um you know when it comes to um, you know, the record um, I felt pretty good. Um, I felt in a good rhythm. Um, and once I get in a good rhythm, then I feel like I make any shot on the floor, you know, to, to break the record. Um, I was able to get to a, a really good spot on the floor where I'm very comfortable with and get to one of my patented fadeaway shots, you know. And uh, I know a lot of people wanted me to go to the sky hook to break the record or, or one of my signature dunks. Uh, but my fader was a signature play as well, and uh, I was able to get it, and, and um, it touched nothing but the bottom of the net, and that was, uh, that was pretty cool. LeBron, um, Kareem has been the steward of this record for almost 40 years. Um, when he broke it, uh, Wilt Chamberlain did not attend. Um, what did it mean to you to have Kareem here tonight, watching the game, but also uh, coming up and, and sort of having that ceremonial moment of, of handing off that the record to you. I just think it's great for the game of basketball. You know, it's um, be talked about for years and years and years. You know, I'm a historian of the game, so I know what, you know, guys like Kareem and Wilt and MJ and Magic and Bird, and, you know, Oscar Robinson, Elgin Bader, the rest, you know. I can be up here all night talking about so many greats and legends. You know, for me, um, personally, um, you know, it's just an honor to be just named with the greats. Um, be in a conversation with the greats that played this game before me. That's some of the greats that's playing right now. Um, and then there's going to be some greats that play, um, you know, when I'm done playing the game. You know, so it's just always just a um, surreal feeling. Me and my boys, my guys, uh, we talk about it all the time, you know, about how we used to watch these guys and how we used to compare these guys or we used to 
think we were those guys when we would play, you know, AAU or just playing around in the backyard or whatever the case may be. And now we actually, you know, up here with them, you know, and uh, my name is being compared to them or whatever the case may be. So it's just a real surreal feeling for sure. LeBron, everyone talks about who the GOAT is. How would you describe the GOAT and where would you put yourself in that conversation? Um, I don't know, man. You know, for me, um, you know, I think it's great barbershop talk. It's, um, it's going to happen uh, forever and ever. Um, you know, if I was um, the GM or, or whatever the case may be of a, of a franchise that was starting up and I had the number one pick, I'd take me. But that's just me because I believe in myself. I know what I bring to the table. Um, you know, a guy that has been able to um, – transform his game over the course of 20 years to be able to play any position in his league and excel at any position. You know, I can play one through five. Um, you know, I've led the league in assists. Um, you know, I've been able to do whatever this this game um, has wanted me to do and also just transform my game as well. When the game, it was, when I first got into the league, it was very slow. I remember we had I mean, a playoff game with Detroit where we was in the 70s. You know, finals games when we was in the 70s with San Antonio in the 80s. You know, to now you see teams score 150 and you have to be able to keep up, you know, and more threes and things of that nature. So, um, you know, um, you know, just being able to stay, um, you know, with the curve and, and, uh, and changing my game if I needed to or just improve my game. But that don't take away from nobody else. I mean, so many great players has played this game and, has, you know, has a last – Long legacies in, in, in this in this in this game. Uh, this NBA is a beautiful thing, and it's been some some beautiful players to play it. But I, would, I can't take nobody over me. Le LeBron, you have championships, MVPs, Finals MVPs, and, and countless other accolades. Where does this achievement rank for you uh, among all your basketball accolades? I don't know. Um, the championships sit at the top. Um, because I'm a team first guy when it comes to understanding that you can't be great in this league without great teammates, great coaches um, that prepare yourself um, every single day to be great. So, um, you know, the championships will always sit at the top for me because that's just where I come from. I come from playing championship basketball since the first day I ever played um, organized basketball when I was eight years old. So that would always sit at the top. Um, I didn't set this this was not a goal for me that's why it's probably so surreal and, and and so just like weird to me because I never ever talked about being an all-time scorer in NBA history I've it's never even been a thought of mine until I just I guess I start seeing my my numbers get closer and closer I was like oh wow this is this is kind of crazy this is like it's weird but it's I can, I guess I can do it because I'm gonna be playing, and I know I'm still playing at a high level, so it's, it can it can happen. Um, but I, I don't know where it sits. Um, I've been able to do some incredible things in this league, and hopefully, I can do some more incredible things before I'm done. Um, LeBron, right here. I'm gonna squeeze two in. Sorry, but one is I, you gave a long hug to the walkers as you were leaving the court, and. Um, you know, you've got a lot of people here tonight that have known you forever. Uh, what does it mean to you to have those people here? And then the second one is just um, you, you had tears in your eyes when, when this, you know, when the celebration was happening. Like, did the emotion surprise you, the emotion that you felt surprise you at all? Um, to answer your first question, I wouldn't be who I am today without the support of everyone that I got in town for this. Uh, I wouldn't want it no other way. And... You know, Pam and, and Big Frankie are, are, are a huge part of why I can sit up here today and talk about this. Um, they took me into their household along with their three other kids, um, you know, at the time and, and made me feel like I was one of their own. Um, you know, uh, Big Frankie introduced me to the game of basketball. Um, he was the first person to, to, to show me how to make a left-hand layup. And now I love going left. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm... I feel, even, I feel like I'm a left-hand dominant player because of Big Frankie. He told me you're not, you will never be a good, as good as you can be if you can't use both hands. So, um, and he told me you also will never be as good as you can be if you don't um, get others involved. Um, so, 
He just taught me the game from a, from a, from a young age. And uh, I've taken those skills. Uh, not only from the basketball side, but also the accountability inside of the household. I'm doing chores every Saturday morning. Uh, my little brother's back there. He, he hated him. Um, we hated him. I mean, we hated doing chores.